Adam, oh. wow. Um, it happened very fast today in court. And as you predicted on this show, uh, this is not going to a trial at all, is it? It's not. But you know something? I predicted it for much different reasons than it sounds like that's what ended up going going down. Explain. Well, I'll, I'll go through the whole process with you. I got to go to court today and not be a lawyer, pretend to be a reporter. I was sitting amongst the media, and that was pretty cool to be able to do. It was in court in front of Justice Melvin Green, and his honor came into court. And after everybody introduced himself, he explained that the matter had been subject to a few judicial pretrials, which means that the lawyers would have had informal discussions with the judge in chambers in an attempt to resolve the matter. And it's all taking place in chambers, so it gives everybody an opportunity to have some more informal, honest discussions. And this would not be the judge that would he be hearing the matter if it goes to trial. So it also gives the judge the ability to be honest about what he's thinking as well. Once that happened, the Crown Attorney, Ms. Malali, Catherine Malali, stand, stood up and explained where this matter was going. And what she explained was that the complainant was visiting from Mexico on May the 8th, and there was an assault charge that occurred during her visit. We didn't get any more facts other than that, which I was kind of surprised about, and I'll get to that in a moment. So Ms. Malali went on to explain that the complainant has since returned to Mexico and she really doesn't have any intention to come back and certainly no intention to come back for any type of trial. She explained that the complainant wants contact with Mr. Osuna as well as him to be involved in co-parenting their young child and she wants the case to conclude. The Crown explained that she has no ability to compel this complainant to come back for a trial. Part of the reason might be that she's in Mexico and it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to subpoena somebody who isn't in the country. So really no ability to force her to come back for a trial. And as I've explained on the show, this is a case where it's going to be very difficult to prove a case without the complainant being here. It's not impossible if they took certain types of statements. And again, I don't know the facts of this case. I don't know if they took those statements or not, but very unlikely, very hard to prove. And the Crown went on to say that there was no what we call RPC, which means a reasonable prospect of conviction. Essentially, they could not prove this case because she's not here was the reason that she explained why she felt that they couldn't prove the case. Would that, the cr- Adam, would, would that – sorry to interrupt you, but would that there – tell you that there is no video it might it might that's a, that's a great question you're putting me on the spot barry but it certainly suggests that if there's no rpc perhaps there's no video right. now even if there is a video you still need people to identify the video to identify the parties but i would tend to agree just on my gut that it might suggest that Now, we're getting to a peace bond here. Now, there's other reasons why there could be a peace bond, one of which could be the allegations appear to be quite mitigating, but that wasn't one of the reasons that the Crown stated. The the reason that the Crown stated that she was unable to proceed was that the complainant isn't here and she's not willing to come back for the purpose of trial. The Crown then went on to explain that a few things have happened in the interim, one of which is that uh, Osuna went for some counseling, both through Major League Baseball as well as local counseling with the psychotherapist here in Toronto, which I assume happened during the course of a 75-game suspension. And she explained that she was laying what was called a Section 810 information, or what we've called a peace bond, a Section 810 peace bond, before the court. And in doing so, and I was a little surprised about this, she didn't lay, read any facts that provide a basis for the peace bond, because the judge still has to satisfy himself that the complainant has reason to fear for her safety of herself or her property. Now, this might have happened in chambers. It judge might have felt it's enough for her to say that there was an assault charge laid, but I was expecting there to be facts read in, it, at least perhaps massaged down facts, but there was no facts read in. At which point, Mr. Basili, um, Osuna's lawyer stood up and said a few things. He said what I expected him to say is that there's no admission of any civil or criminal liability. 
essentially meaning that even though his client is ultimately agreeing to enter into the peace bond, he's not admitting to any wrongdoing in, from both a civil or a criminal standard. And he did go on to say that Mr. Osun is pleased with this result and has no intention to do what we call show cause, which is argue against the peace bond. One thing I found interesting from a legal geek perspective is that the Crown, as a minister of justice, if they feel there's no reasonable prospect of conviction, their responsibility is to withdraw the charge, which she did, but she also did it by laying a peace bond. So it makes me wonder if Osuna had said, I don't want to sign a peace bond, if ultimately the Crown would be forced to completely withdraw it. And Scott and I were talking about that just by text. And for one, this was a deal that was worked out from all parties. And it seems like a good deal that I expect most lawyers to take. And I have absolutely no doubt that Mr. Basili did a good job. But it's certainly possible that the Crown said, well, if you don't agree to that, we'll try to get her here and we'll try to prove this case. So it was a deal that was worked out, that all parties worked out in chambers. And I think it was a, ultimately a good deal for everybody, especially given the fact that she says she's not coming and the Crown's not going to be able to prove this case. So ultimately, I'm not going to say everybody walks away happy because that rarely happens in a criminal proceeding when everybody goes through all the stress. But I would think everybody's walking away satisfied. Adam, there has been speculation by fans online that, oh, Roberto Osuna and his lawyer must have paid this woman off. Can you clarify? I know that that is a thing in the United States, but I believe that you have said that that doesn't happen in Canada. But could it happen behind the scenes without anybody knowing it? Is there that possibility that some money exchanged hands for her to keep quiet? I don't think it did. And uh, a few reasons for that. The, the whole process seems to be completely above board. Osuna's, um, I'm not sure if it's a girlfriend or a common law, but the complainant hired her own lawyer, Paul Mergler, who has a sterling reputation amongst the courts. He's Spanish speaking, so he would have been great to communicate with her. And he would have communicated her desires through the Crown Attorney. So she had somebody representing her. And essentially, he would have communicated that she doesn't want to come back. She wants to move on with her, lives and she, her life, and she wants Osuna to be a part of her life. Could any money have changed hands in terms of a restitution agreement? It's not something that I'm going to say is impossible. I've heard of it happening, but... If it does, it would have to be completely above board, and there is absolutely nothing that would lead me to believe that that happened here. There is also the other reaction from some fans online that feel that because this went down, that does mean 100% that he didn't do anything and that he should be cleared in the the court of public opinion as well. Can you clarify that? No, it doesn't prove he didn't do anything. And as Scott and I discussed, there's... And our system doesn't have this declaration of innocence. So, again, I don't know the facts. I don't know if he did anything or not. If he, in fact, didn't do anything, then he might be a little disappointed for not having his day, not having that declaration. But if he did do something, then this is a really good result for him. And I I was saying that in some ways, the court of public opinion might not treat him well based on this result because who knows how it looks that the witness wasn't prepared to come. And if we separate the notion of domestic violence, I want to separate that from the Osuna case because it's not fair to speculate on his case and this ultimate result. But it's not a good thing if complainants who are assaulted are uncomfortable and unwilling to come testify. So that could mean that she was she was afraid of facing him. Is that uh, that what you're kind of alluding to that possibility? I I, want to speak more generally because it. I don't know if that was the case here, and I don't want any suggestion that it it, it was because there's nothing that suggests that that happened. It sounds like she wants him to be a part of her life. And often in these cases, if he did something wrong, he did – he went for counseling. He – Well, that's the thing, Adam. He he went for counseling. If you didn't do anything wrong, why would you go to counseling? Well, for one, it would have been an, a requirement of the Crown in order to even get to a peace bond here. Okay. The, the Crown would have said, you know what, we don't know what happened, or I, I'm prepared to peace bond this case, but I'm only doing that if you show that you're trying to better yourself. 
So he, he goes to the counseling and hopefully he learns something from it. And even if in fact there was no assault, it doesn't mean there wasn't any anger. And counseling's a good thing because it shows that he's making an attempt to better himself and mitigate any potential future risk. And again, it perhaps makes this a fair resolution for everybody. But in the eyes of the law, in the eyes of the court now, Roberto Osuna has a completely clean record, other than what if there's anything else he's ever done in his life. But as far as this particular case goes, it is gone now from his from any. There's record. been no criminal finding of guilt, no criminal conviction. There will absolutely be a record of a peace bond, and the peace bond's going to be in place for the next 12 months. And the peace bond says he's not allowed to have contact with the complainant without her written and orally revocable consent. So there is a record of the peace bond and it's going to be recorded in the police system for at least a year and it might eventually get expunged, but record expungement is a very complicated area of the law that's a bit of a wild west right now as well.